Alright guys, we are back with my WWE Night Champions 2015 review. As I, when I looked at the show and the card at, as soon as I told you guys when I did a preview a few days ago, I was looking excited for the preview. And when I, when I saw the preview, I thought, oh my god, this bad things happen in the main event. Sting vs. After all, I wanted Sting to win the main event because Sting could have, you know, boosted the race for the WWE and whatever in the Monday Night Football and the time when they needed Sting in the WWE, when the time they needed Sting as World Heavyweight Champion was the time right now because that is the time when Monday Night Football comes back and also uh, Monday Night Football and Monday Night Football competing with ratings and that's when the WWE gets a bit sluggish with their storylines and it would be a good time. Uh, the Chris Jericho return was, oh, what the fuck, why is Chris Jericho return? Don't get me wrong, I'm a big Jerkaholic, but they don't do nothing different with Chris Jericho, I'm sorry. Here's a guy in Chris Jericho, who the WWE for many years had him as an Intercontinental Champion, a multi-time Intercontinental Champion, a World Champion, a WWE Champion, a Tag Champion, whatever, he's worked with loads of young guys and he's had some awesome matches, but, and he's great for that, and I respect him, and he is a future Hall of Famer. And in the next couple, maybe two, three years, here he's gonna be in the Hall of Fame. But every time they bring back Kiss Jericho, he or, he just lose, he just loses jobs, leaves, repeat. That's all he does. Loses, he jobs, loses, leaves, repeat. Loses jobs, repeat. Loses jobs, repeat. That's all he does. Loses jobs, repeat, leave. That's all he does. It's just the same old thing with Chris Jericho. I mean, I thought the WWE should maybe add. Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Samoa Joe. I mean, how great would it be for Samoa Joe to debut at, at a pay-per-view? I mean, even you know, without no like spoilers, right? That would have been so cool. But just WWE's logic. I don't know if it's Kevin Dunn behind this. Probably is, or it's just Baby Vince saying just bring Jericho out there to bring more ratings. I guess I don't know what it was, but it was just so stupid. And at the end, the main event at the end when Seth Rollins retained, that was a, that was good. But you had fucking Kane come back in his fucking mask gimmick thing, and in his deem in his like fucking bed monster gimmick, and tombstone fucking Seth Rollins. So we're gonna have a Seth Rollins and Kane feud now, going to ha to going into Madison Square Garden that show that that pay feud are gonna do in October, and possibly going into Survivor Series. So basically, you're circling your main event for possibly this year's Survivor Series to gonna be Kane versus Seth Rollins. Are you serious? The big drop, the supposed match, the big match for the Dodo Watal this year, for the Dodo Watal match this year is going to be Kane versus Seth Rollins. <coughs> well, Seth Rollins is going to get put over by Kane. I know Seth Rollins getting put over by Kane is going to be bad. Oh my God! I know Sting did a good job by putting over Seth Rollins, but oh my God, Kane in the main event. Ah, <sighs> just how low the WWE has got. I mean, they could have had some more Joe debuted probably after you know. Sting got beat by Seth Rollins and uh, Samoa Joe just basically could have just demolished Seth Rollins. It would have made Seth, it would have made the town way more important and made the storyline way more interesting than the Kane and Seth Rollins feud. <sighs> I don't know. I just don't know why the WWE just. I know that's not my one. I'm just gonna get this review over with anyway. So the 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 match on the pre-show was basically the comic, the cosmic wasteland. Which was Stardust and the Ascension. First, uh, they defeated Neville and the Lucha Dragons. It was an alright match. Uh, just six guys to do nothing with at this point. I don't really care. Kevin Owens versus is right back. A match that was alright. It was an alright big guy match. Right back. Tries to put Kevin Owens to a shell shot, but then Kevin Owens breaks his eye. Kevin Owens breaks right back's eyes. Then he rolls up for the win. He was the guy in Kevin Owens that. Beat John Cena on his first pay per view when he debuted, and basically beat John Cena at another pay per view lot, and then he gets to this pay per view with in an nice time match with Ryback, and he's basically using heel tactics. Are you serious, Kevin Owens? If he was booked properly, if he was booked like really, really strong, he would have beaten uh, Ryback anyway, clean. That's how I would have booked it anyway, but yeah, Ryder and Kevin Owens wins, he's your new IC champion. Um after that the second match I show was Dolph Dolph to the Rusev. Don't care about the feud. I hope this feud is ended between Dolph and Rusev. Nobody cares. 
Um, Team 3D defeated the defeated the New Day by DQ because Xavier like, attacked Team 3D, but Team 3D put Xavier to the table. Then Charlotte defeated Pe uh, Nikki Bella by her shot. Uh, Whatever, whatever finisher is called, the figure eight. So basically, that match with Nikki Bella and, and Charlotte was basically Charlotte was getting dominated by Nikki Bella, and Ni and Charlotte hit the worst spear ever and the figure eight and got the win. So all, n Charlotte's renewed Divas champion, and she looked like the John Cena of the Divas division. Oh my God! Uh, then we had the White Family versus Reigns, Ambrose, and the Mystery Partner. Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho was just there to eat the pin. Basically, Chris Jericho gets, um, gets tapped out, taps out to the brown, Braun Strowman, the new white family member, and basically Jericho's just point over that guy, and that was it. Um, don't know why this match could have been a lot, but I mean, I don't know, like all WWE wanted to do is basically they didn't want to basically. Like Roman Reigns eat the pin, they didn't want Dean Ambrose to eat the pin, so they thought just bring Jericho back to eat the pin, and you know, I can understand. I mean, um, I can understand now why they brought Jericho in to just eat the pin anyway. It, it makes sense. Then we got Cena defeating Seth Rollins. It was a typical Cena Rollins match. It was good. Um, Cena won with the AA, I think, and then he is the new U.S. champion again. Whatever. And then we get to the main event. Seth Rollins is sustained. Uh, before the ma um, after the match, I did hear that Seth Sting did get an injury, and he is injured at the minute. Uh, anyway, um, because of the, uh, after the main event, but like I said, um, it was a good match. You know, Sting got quite good out there. He tried scoping Deathlock, and Rollins kicked out. Uh, Rollins had that stupid ring gear on for SummerSlam. It looked horrible. Um, and then Rollins hits a uh, Kenny Bay for the win, I think, and gets the win. Uh, and then Kane comes out, basically. The lights go red, and then King comes out. He chokes lines and two stops Seth Rollins, and that's how we ended Night Champions. Overall, I thought Night Champions was an alright show. It wasn't like a bad show. I just thought some of the things on the show was bad booking, like King coming out and returning was a bad idea in the main event. Uh, Jericho returning was probably a bad idea as well because he he was just there to eat the pin basically and lose. Um Kevin Owens should have probably beaten Ryback better. It should have maybe won the match better. Um against Ryback. Um that was basically about it. Uh, the show was alright. It wasn't the best show best pay per view in the world but it was an alright pay per view. So that guy my WWE really uh, that was my WWE Nightcap 2015 review. What do you guys think of the show? Leave us some comments, guys. Right now.